I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man is Everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Ricardo. What's up, dude? Eddie. How you feeling, man? Eddie McFucking <laughs> G. Yeah. Dude, Eddie has been... You've been on a fucking tear lately. You've been a little irritated. Oh. Yeah, I mean, that's just... You're just getting to know me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a normal... Yeah, I'm a cranky fuck, dude. I, you know what I mean? I try and be like put on a good face, but I'm a cranky individual, you know? I push it all down. It starts to seep out, you know, spill you, over a little bit. You know, this is interesting. I was thinking about this with you because now that I, you're right, I have gotten to know you quite a bit. Um, not working around people in an office, have you noticed your tolerance for the human race change as far as like dealing with people on a day to day because you work from home so much? Because we've always talked about this in the show about how you don't have an office space. You're literally working in your bedroom mm -hmm. uh, and how much that is. Like, and also, you know, you and Gina work from home. Right. And Lauren and I work from home, but I actually have to go in sometimes to do my job, mm -hmm. uh, which is a good break. I mean, as much as I hate having to commute, it's a great break for her. Oh, sure. It's a great break for me. I would love to go into an office. Uh, yeah, right. Or I mean, you talked to just about this, get right? out of the house. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah. This is like your this is the only office you have. I know. This, this studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say this though, but you're saying like, so is my tolerance for humans, uh, humanity, uh, like, is it uh, because I, 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 have, I think it has a lot to do with driving. Okay, so I here's, drive a lot now. Yeah, so here, here's I the comparison I'm making. How many people I call an idiot? Oh, I've, dri I've driven with you before. Just, uh, I mean, to the point you're making though about getting to know you better. Uh huh. I my original assessment. You know, when we become when we became close friends. Uh -huh. Now I feel like we're we're business partners and like kind of family. We're really close. Like yeah, I, yeah. I I would share with you stuff I would only share with like my family and my right. wife kind of stuff. So you mm -hmm. get to know people a little better. But my first assessment of you, and I've said on the show, was like not happy go lucky, but kinda like, eh, you know, it is what it is. Because there's things you just you really just don't care about. There are things that in the beginning I'm like, oh, this guy just really goes with it. And I've gotten to know you. <laughs> <laughs> You're as irritable as i am in a lot of in other ways not the same ways i am but mm -hmm. we're like very, we're probably that match each other with the stuff we're irritated at we're really irritated at it oh yeah, we're yeah, really yeah. irritated yeah, yeah, at yeah, yeah, yeah. It. and i always i thought maybe it's because you're not around because for me working virtually for so much through the pandemic and now i've always had a low tolerance for like annoying inconvenient people shit and it got way lower so i'm asking you <laughs> you don't think that has anything to do with irritability I think I just hide it better, and then I, st I like I hide it better than you. You, it's like right, it's like this guy's fuck. What the fuck's wrong with this guy? People like immediately like you just you say hello the wrong way, you shake your hand a little an extra second too long, like you're like what the fuck? All right, sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally exaggerated. I, I've never. <laughs> I have no idea what this man's referring to. I've been nothing but a kind soul and a generous individual to a lot of you humps out there that have inconvenienced my life on a consistent basis. He really just turns into, yeah, right. You fucking pieces of shit. Just breaking my back. To appease a lot of you fucking no nonsense bullshit ass wipes. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Dude, oh my god, listen to this. Give me. Oh shit. So I have a tendency to over uh, extend. <laughs> oh, I I, uh -huh. I do a lot. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this week has just been like crazy with work shit and like house shit. You know, the kid got sick Sunday. He had the surgery today. Like just everything is in a, yeah. you know, and starting back to school, even though I don't have, a, I'm not in school. I don't have a kid in school, but it affects us. Oh. This back to school is a thing for everyone's oh, out. I mean, it's, huh. everything's busy again because you forget you got three months of summer where everyone's kind of taking shifts of not being around. Uh -huh. And now everyone's back. Like, yeah. So I had to clean this house. You know, I get down and dirty when I clean this house. Dude, this is the cleanest uh, apartment I've ever been in. It takes me four hours. Oh, I, easily. I, I take the couch cushions off. It would take I, me four weeks to get something <laughs> this clean. 
<laughs> I go under the fridge. I mean, I go all out. You go under the fridge? Well, I have a little thing that does it for me. Wow. Because I don't want... I've had... I've yeah, lived mice. with bugs. Yeah, you know, yeah, and this like building's new-er, but it's still... There's people that live around you that are scum. You know, you don't yeah. know. People get roaches. It comes from other uh -huh. apartments. So I always get all the food up. The point is, I was working my ass off and also had to work work at the same time oh. on like my phone and on the uh, laptop you doing and i hit my finger I, I bang my hands and fingers yeah. up because i'm moving too fast yeah. and i was trying to move something out of here on the desk right and i couldn't find the cord and, and lauren was sitting here at her desk and i ripped this fucking cord out and this puppet has like a paper towel <laughs> thing in it a wood and it flew across the room and i'm cussing it out and I'm losing it. Oh God, I'm losing damn, it, dude! But in seconds, I come back. Like that's what therapy does. Like I come oh, back quick. Uh huh. So I come back. Lauren had walked out of the room because she's seen me do that before. I walked in and I apologized, and it hit me that my son, my son, if he gets pissed off, he will launch, he'll launch whatever's in his hand across the fucking room. He'll scream. He'll tip it over. He'll try to li lift the dining room table up. And I said, I said to Lauren, I go, you know, I really thought Levon got that from you. <laughs> ah, that's amazing. That's so great. That's so great. He's three now. It's insane. For three, yeah. <laughs> it, it, all of this is, you're looking at Lauren like, man, you're fucking genius. Look at this kid. Because fucking... Lauren actually is, like, yells more in the house than I do. Oh, really? I'm like a, a volcano, and uh -huh. she's a steady. Uh -huh. like, she could get. Yeah fiery uh-huh so i always thought when he's like getting he's like get, for like yeah. blocks like he puts blocks together right if he can't get the block on right instead of like taking a minute he just takes like the block could be as high as him he'll just knock it all down pick it up throw it i mean it is like tony soprano when Sounds, he finds out carmelo's in I, love with furio i i hear <laughs> i hear this and i and like i it sounds fun. Like I just want to just <laughs> be able to. Dude, he loves his life. To be three and to just have tantrums and he's, and, he's, and no no uh, repercussions whatsoever. You could just throw shit. Uh. Going into his work, which is his pre K. That's his work. That's yeah. his working class whole work. <laughs> yeah, right. He yesterday he threw a tantrum where he picked up the stroller, like picked it up off the ground like five inches and winged it like a shot put or like a, a that hammer throw. That heavy, dude. He just threw it and he. Freaked the fuck out. Got so Lauren had to carry him out. I hear him in the hallway freaking out. She's like, "Yeah, the minute we got in the elevator, he, he just asked for a granola bar. He was chill. So he just needs to get it out." Uh huh. That's I. I think you're right. I think that has to happen. I think that's why adults go and break shit. Like you know, they do those stupid things where you you get uh you ever do that for a team event where they go they take you to like a a place where you can break TVs and no, it's like a demolition therapy thing. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. It's like a team event. Well, some companies will like do a it company. a team building. Oh, like like you know, let's all bond over oh, this. I, I thought you meant like a fucking hockey team. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. But that's what they call in corporate America when they want you to get together and it's a team. bond, team oh, building. Uh huh. The uh, I was thinking, isn't it funny that like the see your your son throw that stroller, <laughs> and some just fucking jerk off is like going to be a good quarterback <laughs> <laughs> just go straight sports with it and ignore all of the like the social fucking footballs everything kids got an arm on him i'll tell you that i sent my brother, I sent my brother uh it's so funny mission of him like bashing his toys up right and then he just found he finds this little nerf football and he goes like across the the hall and he throws it towards the toy box and he makes it and i just happened to be filming him oh i was filming the the meltdown. Yeah, 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 right. And my brother sees him throw it and make it. He's like, oh, you see that, though? You see that? <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I know. It's all like, of, like, that, all the things that need, like, therapy and everything, and all you just pick the one thing, going to be a good, good in sports. Look at his core strength, the way he tipped that dining room table. <laughs> he doesn't even give, the, give it away, either. Like, he's... <laughs> yeah, his eyes are downfield. He keeps that safety frozen. <laughs> Man, uh, that's great, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. Having a kid, it must be it must be amazing to like figure that out like what's from me and what's from my wife. Like that's yeah. a fun 
kind of thing. Yeah. And and it's like it, it's like a self realization that you have about yourself too. Like when you see, oh, you're like, oh, it's eye opening. Oh, it must be. It's because uh, it's a little you. Yeah. It's a well, little yeah. I think for the the craziest part for me is you know he looks so much like me and his spirit is very similar to mine from what I've been like people who met him that knew me you know what I've been told it's very similar but you could tell like with when you look at pictures of me as a kid where stuff started getting tough for me you could see it in my face oh wow you could see it cuz i cuz i because i look at him uh-huh and how happy he is yeah. and how strong his spirit is you could tell he hasn't been broken uh, sure you know, he's like, there's nothing that has happened to him where he's broken. Right. And uh, it's interesting now because that allows me to recognize like old pictures of myself and go, oh, uh huh. that's about the time that yeah, I was. Yeah, it's therapeutic, yeah, it's dude. It's nuts, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's wild. nuts. I got a thing now where like, um, you know, I've been married 16, I've been with Gina for a long time. We've been married 16 years. Uh, married and how long together? It's like probably 18, I guess. Total? 2000, 2005. Wow. We met. Um, <clears throat> so coming up on 20, the, um, the, uh, but she, so she knows my family now and everything and I'll get, she'll just go, okay, Ed, she'll call, like, she'll call me like as if my, uh, I'm my dad. I, doesn't that she, aggravate you? She go, no, it's, it, it, Is it catches, earned. Is it earned? Oh, it's 100% well, see, earned. See, you don't have yeah. like a huge beef with your dad. No, you no, no. Your no. dad are close. So Super close. That's yeah, like yeah. one of those things that if someone, like a partner, would She'd do call me Ed Senior. She's like, oh, Ed Senior. <laughs> are you named after your dad? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember when I was like 14, my dad's like, yeah, you're like a fucking clone. It, like, in like such an annoyed way, like, <laughs> you're like a fucking clone of me, that's dude. That's why your mother <laughs> hates you. <laughs> I hate his guts. That's not true, but that's funny. <laughs> very funny. <laughs> the, I was actually talking to my therapist about how much my mom hated my dad, and I'm sure a lot of it was was earned on his side. But like, I just remember him uh, just try like having a good run, and for a good run for him is like a month without doing something. Stupid, getting right. caught fucking around, getting yeah. caught oh, yeah, yeah. being lazy. You know, it's selfish shit, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he would be on a good run, and he—you could tell—he was like actively trying to get in her good graces, and she would just bury his ass, man. Uh -huh. Oh, I remember uh, when I started to become a teenager, and my anger problems were like fucking out of control. I got really angry once, and she saw me, and she was like, "You look just like your father." Oh wow! And I remember being kind of like, "Oh fuck, what does that even?" Is that sounds bad? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah, the yeah. way she said it was like, right. sound, sounds bad. Yeah. You know, now that I have a, you know, the kid thing, just to wrap that up in a bow, I honestly have a lot more compassion for my portions of my upbringing now that I have a kid. Cause now there's stuff that like, you realize. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, not, yeah. I, don't get me wrong. The stuff yeah. that's bad is bad, right. but the stuff that there are, there were some lingering things that now are kind of settled just because of the reality of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You can't push shit back on the donkey. Being a parent is fucking hard. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, I remember having that realization, like when I was like thirty-five, realizing that, and that was the age, and I was like a fuck up. You know what I mean? I was yeah. barely getting things together. Yeah, and my parents had already had kids. I was like fifteen. Yeah, they had a fifteen-year-old at thirty-five. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like crazy. A different era, different time. But still, it's like I think about like I'm like, oh god, I couldn't even imagine being a parent and, and how ca the chaos. Oh, it, it, yeah. Well, not only that, like now that there is some like I am really grateful and lucky that I have a flexible situation, work wise. Oh, that sure. doesn't affect my sure, money sure, sure. or affect my family, like like my family negatively. Like I'm, it's for it's a relatively virtual situation, and Lauren is here. So this kid just gets to be around us. Yeah, that's cool. And my dad, I don't know if my dad would even wanted that. I don't know if my mom would have wanted that. I'm sure on some level they would have, but they didn't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. They had to work. I yeah, remember right, there was yeah. one year where my mom couldn't get a job. We had just moved back to San Diego and she was home for like the first four or five months of my school year. And it was kind of awesome because coming home to your mom, like she had like lunch, right? Like something to eat. Yeah, it was just yeah. like one of those you see on TV like oh mom's home and there's lunch to be made or like a snack and you know it's yeah, just yeah. it felt stable right but uh 
Yeah, I'm lucky I, I have that. I don't have any of that either. I was like one of the like I had to like make dinner and stuff like that for my brother and sister. <laughs> it's a lot of tuna fish. <laughs> I'm trying not to keep doubling down on the tuna fish stuff. Like you see my head, a, like, my eyes got crossed. There was a lot of tuna. I, cook a, I made a lot of tuna, like a little tuna casserole, a little tuna salad. It's all the same ingredients. Dude, I used to make this fucking concoction. I would put toast, like I would make toast, and then I would put a bunch of shredded cheese, and I would microwave it so mm-hmm. the cheese would melt on yeah. it. Yeah, that was like my go-to. Yeah, go-to trash meal. Sure, I, could, I didn't know how to. Did you put anything else on it? No, just melted cheese on bread. That's it. I couldn't make anything else. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Sometimes I'd add mayo, and that would make it even better. Okay, that That's was like cool. my because I was home alone a lot. That was like my go to. You go-to. do like a tuna melt. I can't use a stove. I was scared to use a stove. Oh, uh, dude, I've been scared of my shadow for so long. I just huh. recently, yeah. in my life, like in my thirties, were like got a little better about. Interesting. I could not cook. I could I was cook. home alone a lot. I, I was a stoner dog shit. I was a stoner kid, so like I. Oh, would. I prop. See, you know what's so funny? Weed has motivated me to do more things than like I made my own bong once because I. I didn't have anything to smoke this yeah. weed out of. And yeah, I was yeah. desperate. I made it out of a uh, yeah, some water bottle. It's like a little project. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did the research. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just need to like the, the pole. Yeah, right. You need the yeah, you need to get like the vent. Yeah. It's funny because I failed on I I fail at so many things. I'm so such a failure. You're like all of a sudden you're a physics fucking it's like major. Yeah. Kung Fu Panda or he's motivated. He's, he doesn't turn into the dragon. This is how you know I have a three year old. Yeah. He doesn't like, turn into a dragon warrior until he's motivated by food. I figure this is your Jack Black fan. You even know Kung Fu Panda. I don't know any of that. Uh, I didn't even know that was Jack Black. The, uh, but for uh, cooking in a pan, like, dude, I can put. Now I can make a killer quesadilla. I can make a great. Special Dude. fluffy scramby eggs, bro. I'm like the leftover master. You well, get, I know you like. You can get. Like, you repurpose a lot like of. Leftovers. We didn't have. Yeah, we didn't have like something one night, and I was just like, ah, it's ordering. You know, the place that we like to order from is busy. I'm like, it's gonna be like 45 minutes. I'm like, let me see what I can do. I love how you did th- this. I do that. That just shows how old your I age. am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, hun. Hey, give me a call. <laughs> This. I do a little fucking <laughs> little fucking jiggle with it too. I'm like, bah. <laughs> hey, babe. Hey. <laughs> Give me a ring. <laughs> <laughs> click, <laughs> and then I fucking click on it. <laughs> Everybody listening has no idea what we're doing right now. I'm putting the love fucking how phone it. up to my ear as if I'm uh, 45. 50 years old, which it, I am. It, it, the, the stuff that's been aged out because of technology is such a bummer. There's so much stuff that's so fun that are just aged out. Like you, you, There's movies now I watch that I love that have been ruined because oh. I can't suspend disbelief anymore. Oh, because, because of technology. The, internet. the whole movie would have been solved in the first five minutes if there was the internet, the or, internet. A, or a cell phone, right. a mobile phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. But you have to put those in perspective. I mean, you of watch course. It. But the movie has to be good enough. For me to put that in perspective. Do you understand what I'm saying? So like, for example, Fry Green Tomatoes. Oh, I don't know this movie. All right. Kathy Bates is great in that movie. Uh-huh. I thought it was a classic. Watched it again. Not a very good movie. Oh. Does not really uh, reflect what a good movie should be. Uh, What's another one I just watched? Out? Say Anything with John Cusack. Love Cameron Crowe. Worship this movie. Mm-hmm. Also a movie did not hold up. What do you mean? It's... The lead actress is not great in it. Uh huh. Uh, Ioni Sky. Damn. Yeah, good yeah. call. I know this movie. Uh, Cusack is just incredible. Like Cusack's character that kickbox- is so when he's relatable. At dinner. Uh, it's amazing. He's talking about being the next kickbox I champion. Don't wa- I don't want to buy. I don't want to work in something that's been bought or sold or buy or sell. Yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. Whole that, that's thing. like vintage. That's like so his good. shit. He's amazing. Yeah. But that's the part that I got distracted by. There are so many like the boombox part. Yeah. Iconic. So the whole sh- movie gets a, a great review due to like three things that Cusack just did, uh-huh. like Jeremy Piven trying to get his keys. Oh, I don't remember that. So Cusack's the key master in the beginning of the movie for that giant party he takes Diane Court to. Okay. And Piven's fucked up and is trying to get his keys from him, but he uh-huh. won't let him. Uh-huh. And he's like, you must chill. You must chill. Yeah, like, right. That's a classic. Eric Stoltz in the chicken outfit. Yeah. So, but what? why doesn't this hold up? When you watch that movie. Mm-hmm. And you see how long the tooth it is in the middle, oh. and how she is 
just not a great character, how selfish her character is, and how she's put on this like pedestal. I get that's the point. Right. But there's a way It's a long listen, here's the thing. It's too long. Here's what you're reacting to. Movies were longer back then. Yes. The edit it's the edit, dude, it's a slower pace. The pace of movies now and just you 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 can't you watched have you watched Stripes lately? When was the last time you watched Stripes? It's been forever. It's a fucking You know what it's I did a watch drag, last night? Total dude. Recall and to your point, 2 hours yeah. should not have been 2 hours. Yeah. They yeah. you know cuz I watched But they cut films the way they cut films now. No, it's but, really it's it, it's ed, it's the editing yes, has changed. Yes. Yeah, 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 so it's sure. 1990 Total Recall comes out. Uh-huh. Then you have the beginning of that kind of cut which is in my opinion The Godfather in 72. The kind of cut where uh they try to tell stories with images in a way that they never did before. Uh-huh. And then some of these guys don't have the talent, the resources, or the vision that Coppola or Willis have. So they're doing these films like Total Recall. Uh-huh. And Total Recall, there's a scene where the head guy, um, Kogan or Kohegan, whatever his name is, the bad guy, he has these goldfish in these in this tank. And now everything's aged, obviously, because what they thought 2084 would look like is very different than what well, sure. they could, yeah, yeah. right? That's what's fun so about they it, have, yeah. yeah, so they have these, love the movie, by the way, yeah, so yeah. much fun. Yeah. But he has these goldfish, and in that first act, they zero in on the goldfish mm-hmm. as he's feeding them. So I don't know what they're trying to establish. As a viewer, I'm thinking they're trying to establish, oh, that he takes care of these fish. Whatever. He feeds these fish. I don't know if that's like a, a metaphor for him overseeing the whole earth if you will but then in the third act where he wants to catch Schwarzenegger's character he kicks over the fish and then the then the director pans down and focuses on the the walloping fish for a long time yeah. and there are tons of shots like this yeah and you're like why is that well but you're it's, right it's the editing and it's the era. like subtext and it's like uh people people audiences are smarter now like we see we we take so much more in than, you know, I mean, in the 70s, movies were really only like, you know what I mean? They weren't really around that long. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like talking movies had been out for like 30, 30 years, years, something 34 like that. years. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So it's like the evolution, like what we see now, you can, you put things together faster. Yes. Because we're, uh, we're more trained. And we watch. From the beginning of see, life. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Because like in the 80s, like. The movies that we would see, like, you remember the movies as a kid, like, they were, like, kind of dumb. Like, you know oh, what I yeah. mean? It, and it, it, it didn't matter. It was cool. Yeah. It was fun. It was, like, and it, that's the other point. action movies were dumb and fun, man. They get away with so much because you're like, oh, why would he not mourn, like, when Sharon Stone gets killed and her real husband, the other bad guy, sees her? You would think that would be, like, this... I mean, throughout the whole. But that was the flip, though, wasn't? Wasn't there a flip in there? Well, so he, so Arnold was. I can't remember it was, exactly. Sharon it Stone was Arnold's fake wife. Fake wife. Right. Fake wife. Yeah. The guy who was chasing Richter, who was chasing Arnold's character, uh-huh. that was his real wife. They right. were both agents. Right. And throughout the whole film, I mean, she'll call him on that the video phone. Yeah. And he like graze her face on the screen. I mean, they made this character out like he was madly in love with this woman, and then when she dies. And he finds her dead body. After all that, uh, maybe I'm not using this phrase right. Gravitas. Uh huh. Yeah. That should be the that should be the payoff with his, with his character. And it's just like, she's dead. And he moves on. He starts chasing. Like just there was no, there was not even a moment. They spent all that time on the fish and all these other little dopey things, but they just missed the boat on that. Yeah, I guess I don't really, uh, I don't remember it, so I can't really comment on it. Uh, but there, but like you were saying, I'm just agreeing with you that the reality is people are smarter now, and they could get away with that back then, like him not being emotional. Well, I think the other thing was, wasn't it, was, is he a robot, like, is he, is, was it a misdirect at that point? No, 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 it was, um, it was, they never give you full clarity, but it's, it's for sure... He I'm is. Uh, I'm thinking of Blade Runner. Now, too. <laughs> we spent 20 minutes talking about it. Different movies together. <laughs> wait, was he a fucking? Wait, was, was it this? Wait, was it Rutger wait, Howard? Is this was the one we was Arnold gets pregnant. <laughs> This is the one where they do right? the they do the handshake, right? That fucking handshake. Come on, Hendo. 
Predator. Predator. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Dylan, <laughs> I, man, I because now I don't go to bed as early. I force myself to stay up because I've been getting up too early. So when Lauren goes to sleep, I have time for a movie. So I've just been watching. Oh, uh, so I just got dude, Godfather. So Total wait a Recall. Do you do the whole movie before you go to bed? If I have the Godfather, I didn't. Bro, the Total Recall, I clear. I can't. Gina sometimes will like start a movie and then just get up and go to bed. And then I'm like, I got to finish yeah. this movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Godfather, I I was able to because I've seen it so many times. Total Recall, I finished. The night before, though, I fucked myself and I watched that David Chase doc back to back. It was oh. that good. Yeah, wow. On, on HBO Max. I was oh, like, wow. That was about three hours of time. I, yeah, that's, and I, I didn't go to bed at like two in the morning. Yeah, that's that's, that's not what I'm trying to do. But no. you know, but I'm like you. If I get in, I'm in. I can't Dude. walk away. Yep. Dude, we just watched uh, that new Nick Cage movie. Um, the fuck's it called? It's like a horror thing. Uh, Where he he's the the Dracula? Is he dressed like Dracula? No. Uh, oh my god, I can't believe I'm fucking spacing out on it. Uh, it's so good, Nick Cage. Uh, I. I, I watched that movie with Nick Cage where he plays himself. <laughs> with Pedro Pascal. That was a good movie. So fun, dude. That was a fun yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. That was a really fun movie. He's uh he's Nick just, Cage is kind of the man. Dude, there's a movie called Mandy. Do you ever do you ever see that with Nick Cage? No. It's like a fucking acid trip, like heavy metal kind of thing, but it's like takes place in in just like the woods and you know this event happens and then he just goes like dude he makes a fucking a scythe a sith <laughs> like and then he just goes after and it's like got this sith one of those like fucking grim reaper things oh, 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 oh okay right like, yeah yeah they like, like kill like, with wheat wheat yeah and he yeah, goes yeah. after these guys and it is wild dude it's this motorcycle gang <laughs> dude that, i gotta see that this motorcycle that gang stuff of i like mutants. to watch when i'm like baked oh. or on the road yeah dude yeah perfect for sure you know because yeah. i brought so in detroit that I brought that mobile projector that I got, oh, that right. high end one I got. Uh, I watched, and I brought a little like Bluetooth speaker, two hundred inches on the ceiling. I'm watching Red Zone. I'm watching. <laughs> you watching that's Wizard awesome. of Oz? That's awesome. <laughs> In the hotel room, that's it so was cool. incredible. Yeah, Next great. time we're on the road, I'll bring it. It'll oh, like fucking dude. awesome. That's fucking dude. great. Yeah, it was incredible. But I, I'm always thinking about. How I saw Total Recall, that movie came out in ninety. I was nine. I saw that movie when it came out. I saw I've seen that movie about five hundred times. Dude, I saw that when it came out. He when and I'm po- nine. When and there's tits in there, there's uh, cursing. The three tits. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, that was huge. You know that I was in high school, dude. That the woman who plays that character, I didn't know it until now. You ever seen the movie Mannequin? Yeah. One of my favorite all time movies. That Mannequin. Kim Cattrall. Kim Cattrall. The girl the lady who plays Roxy. Who's a male character's first girlfriend? She's the three tit lady. Ah. She is a smoke show. Yeah, she's like one of those late eighties, nineties smoke shows. So let's talk about those three titties then. So were they? Were the two of them real? Or were they I think all? It was just a prosthetic. It was just all. They prosthetic. probably just because they were perfect. They were amazing. Yeah, yeah but yeah, when yeah. you watch it now in four K, like uh, on, the, on the seventy inch screen out there, you're like, because they show them because the. Black dude's feeling them. Do they jiggle? I don't remember. Nah, I just very... remember like high school, like the three titties. I was like, this is. No, I mean, totally something you could whack it to, though. Yeah, no, in high school. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> for high school, court. I'd whack it to a. <laughs> some, Sears catalog. Some Kirby Driftwood. <laughs> <laughs> That's the title, title of the episode, ladies and gentlemen. Kirby <laughs> Driftwood. <laughs> Dude, I used to be able to whack it to anything. I oh. think. The kids now don't have the same imagination that we had. No, you. It's, it's we had access to so much more. Dude, I remember being like in line at like a supermarket and seeing like a Cosmopolitan, like the cover of. You remember the magazine Cosmopolitan? Oh, yeah. Is oh. that still a magazine? I think so. Yeah, pretty famous. But like that, yeah, super famous, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, but they would just have like a hot chick, oh, dude. That was the era. Being of like, like a nine-year-old and be like, "What remember is Maxim this?" Maxim and F H M. Oh, dude. You would just be able to. Sp- Bank, bank, just dude. That was like, and they were so glossy. They like, were these like porno mags you could take on the subway. Oh, it was you know the what I mean? It's so weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember uh, <laughs> my kids yelling. I remember uh, <laughs> my buddies had his dad. <laughs> it's so funny. When I lived in Vegas, we, I hung out with a lot of these like hoodlum dudes. 
and these two like white trash kids they were twins uh-huh and their dad dad was like this heavy guy and his sweat smelled legit like uh bug spray oh it was weird we would play basketball together i remember i have to cover their dad and he like smells like bug spray anyways neither here nor there he had a subscription to playboy <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, outdoor life. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, because he's got all the bug spray. <laughs> he had his description. He's a big hunter, this guy. <laughs> he, he's hanging out at that fish place. What's that sh- giant bait shop called? <laughs> bait. Well, yeah, what's oh, it? Pro, pro bass? Yeah, pro bass. <laughs> because of Kmart, he's just fucking wandering around like a Costco. This guy, this guy just smells like fucking. <laughs> this guy's a walking pro bass. So he had him. And they, they, he, I don't know why he kept the subscription, but they were all still in the, they're pristine. They were still uh, in the, pl- remember the bag? Yeah, they would come yeah, in the yeah, privacy yeah. bag, and they were in the garage up in this box. And it, the the brothers, when he wasn't home, we would go in there and try to get him down. And I was like, hey man, how come your dad, uh, doesn't open these? And the one kid, he had like a lisp. One of the twins, I think he was kind of like slow too in the dome. And he's like, cause he, my mom says he, he read these, he gets too excited. He gets too excited. So I don't know how, oh, what conversation man. that was, but oh. apparently this guy would oh, read these man. Playboys and he'd get so turned on. <laughs> so is he just nutting in his pants? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. That's so fucking. So I stole that guy's Playboys. That's the point of the story. I fucking took them all. Oh. They, they gave them to me, but... If, the mom gave him to my, you, or the old man? Did the old man give him to you, or the mom? No, no, no. The the sons. They oh. said take because my mom. I was my <laughs> dad's dad, getting I'm, too excited. <laughs> I want to take these off your plate, sir. I don't want. You, I don't want you nothing in your pants. I'm a little, I'm a little nervous about the kids. Actually, the twins. One kid's already fucked up. I'm gonna uh, take these off yeah, your yeah, hands, yeah, sir. Yeah, no, I know you're smelling like bug spray. I'm trying to get these kids into a real life here. Let me take these off your hands, because my mom. I was living with my mom alone. My brother and sister were not living with us at the time. My dad was gone, so my mom was at work a lot and would go do her thing. So my house was like. The fuck around house. Oh, yeah. So I would keep him hid in my closet. Uh-huh. Sure. And we would come over. We would play. That was the thing after school. We'd get off the bus, go to my house, Sega, yep. Playboys. It was oh, wow. awesome. Yeah. Sega and Playboys. It was the fucking best. And then the dad caught on and was like, where are my Playboys? Sure. He must have was ready to go get a spanking and couldn't find him. Yeah, yeah, right. He's, I got fucking dinged for that. He's got the ladder. He's got the ladder out. He's got his hole. <laughs> he was so high up. Dude, I had, and they were like hoarders too. I'm like stepping on top of junk like I'm on American Pickers. <laughs> trying to find this guy's Playboys. They're actually I'm fucking right risking next, it all. They're right next to a vintage box of outdoor life. <laughs> Just bug spray galore in the crate still. <laughs> I got mosquito repellent over here. <laughs> I got mosquito repellent. I got roach spray. I got spray. Raid. I got a roach <laughs> motel <laughs> here. <laughs> this guy's house looked like shit. Bugs everywhere. He's Fucking got that, he's bug spray it. stacked up. He's just hopping bug spray. <laughs> jerking off the Playboys. <laughs> <laughs> jerking off the bug spray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I don't know what that guy did for a living, too. These guys all had jobs. My grandfather hoard. Uh, uh, hoarded the, uh, newspapers. the newspapers. Yeah. Oh man, that's one of my favorite stories. Him in the lawn chair with just stacks of newspaper stacks around him. Stacks of newspapers. He got every newspaper, like the you know every uh, like there was like yeah. four newspapers. Yeah. Philadelphia Inquirer, Philly Lexington. Gazette. Fruit, yeah, yeah. And then uh, he would keep them all, and they were so organized. It was just stacks and stacks you know that, of like tied up with in, string. That's trauma, dude. That's what. That's the response. OCD is typically a response to trauma. Oh yeah. Because it, you can control it. Uh huh. Any that's why you do that because you're like that's why I'm OCD. I mean, he was in World War II, so I mean, yeah, I'm sure he's blown some guys' heads off. Yeah, you know, I'm sure he's seen a lot of shit that you probably wish he could take back. Yeah, right. So he just collects newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> so I storm Normandy, little Eddie, and then uh, I collect these papers. <laughs> I leave these to you. <laughs> uh, and Ted McGowan uh, Jr., your uh, grandfather leaves you. 500 Philly Gazettes. <laughs> Dude, he had the biggest car. His car. It Not was the one he kept the, the, what? the dirt in, right? The rock. That he, was the other grandfather. Yeah, because. That's oh, the other grandfather. That's the other grandfather. I didn't know yeah, you yeah. had such a lineage. My yeah, bad. Yeah, my, this is my dad's father. Uh, if he had the biggest white car, and when he would come over, 
he would drive around, and now my dad does it. Drive around looking for parking, and then I just did it today. <laughs> It's it's someone get Gina on the phone. All, you gotta get this. He's at senior. <laughs> Just keep those fucking newspapers. Isn't that funny how you thought like in my thirties, there was no way you could convince me that there would be anything like uh, my family. Like, I, I, oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm my own man. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, what do you yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I'm four thousand miles away from my. I'm a different guy. Twenty years of therapy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dude. It's like inevitable. Oh, it's so inevitable. Dude, I, I've been talking about it on stage. Like, I'm I'm really, it's like I'm turning into my dad. And, like, the biggest thing, I've been fighting it for so long. And now you're, it's you're like. You're about to give in, huh? Well, I'm getting cheap. You're, That's oh. the big thing now. I'm getting cheap. I started buying gas with uh, cash. <laughs> Just to save the, the, the car change? <laughs> the, the fee? <laughs> yeah, well, also I get those coins. <laughs> My rage coins. <laughs> oh, I spent all my rage coins. <laughs> I just love how you have like bullets. Like you're in the Wild West, those be your bullets. I spent them the other day. And I'm have like, you I, thrown any rage coins lately? I haven't replenished. No, I just, oh, my yeah. legs started bouncing here. I got a little nervous. I'm like, yeah, I know. I need to stock up. <laughs> <laughs> my rage coins. <laughs> I told a buddy of mine about it. He goes, "Dude, you got fucking problems." <laughs> I think it's New York City, and you do, and you do got problems. But I do think it's driving. You drive a lot here. I in drive the city, a lot. It sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You drive as much as like a like a part time Uber driver. I would assume. I guess if you tally up all the hours behind the wheel, it's just it's frustrating. Here's what it is in New York City. You never know if it's gonna be twenty minutes or two hours. Uh, two hours. There's never a middle ground. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's just it's like all of a sudden it could just go to like yeah. fuck. Because it you're so right, because I remember living in other cities and it, I'd be mad about going to work in rush hour. But there was always like a consistency to it. Yeah. Like one morning it was thirty, but it would never be more than forty. Right. Never ever. Right. Something would have to Plus happen catastrophic yeah, for yeah, it to be yeah, yeah. Right. more than forty. Yeah. So you can rely on the reality that if you left an hour early, you would always make it on time. And even if you left forty minutes early, you'd make it. Yeah. You can't do that here. No, it's no, no. very annoying. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you have like fifty things going on. When we uh man, that first time we, we that first road gig we did together, trying to get out of the just off of your oh, fucking street. Dude, that that was like a whole I forgot what happened there. That was a whole situation. That was crazy. That was fucked. That's what this is what working class people talk about too. I was around a bunch of working class people this past weekend and they literally talk about routes to work oh, yeah. and traffic a lot. Oh, dude. That's our whole life. Dude. It's, what do rich guys talk about? Like stock rates or fuck what what's what's their like minutia that I, they only relate to? I don't know, but that's, that's like a, a common bond. But like, that's you, the thing is like your commute is like it's your part of your it's your free you're giving yeah. away part of your free work time. Yeah, like, it's like this is I'm going to work. I don't really make enough money as it is, and I always yes. have to give this commute time, which is why everybody the work from home thing. People were like, "Fuck off! I'm not. We, if Dude. we can do it from home, I'm doing it from home." Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. commute's a big fucking deal. I didn't realize in the working class, the middle working class community especially, how big of a deal it is. I don't know. I mean, in New York, I think because it's so ultra focused on trains. Right. That you forget that in other places where it's the car, yeah. it is yeah. a huge topic of conversation amongst suburban working class people. You know, I was around probably six married couples after my show Saturday. And I different pockets of times with different of couples, it, you know, it came up. Commute. Uh, yeah. We're getting drunk. Uh, get, we're talking about the commute. Uh, and I'm like, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get out of here. <laughs> we talk about bug spray or something. Yeah, I mean, talk about this guy's bug spray and your commute. You guys, hey, you guys see totally. I don't even fall. know the roads. <laughs> <laughs> you think people singing songs you don't know? <laughs> We play a different tune. <laughs> uh, uh, shit. Uh, all right. I don't know, man. I'm trying to figure out like uh, what the fucking what to do with my life. You ever feel like you don't know what to do with your life, yeah, dude? All the time. What, are you fucking kidding me? Damn. I think about it when I, I, I th as soon as this podcast ends and I'm think driving back. What, you life? <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> but it's weird because it's like. I on paper I'm doing well, but I still don't see the end. I don't see the next thing. I don't know. Not the that's the wrong way to put it. I just don't know what I'm <laughs> like you said, I don't know like what am I doing? Yeah. Like I have something, 
but how do you but that's part of like that's kind of part of the deal we're doing too you know yeah. the work we do i mean it's like if you if you did know it wouldn't be as fun it wouldn't be as it rewarding be, yeah right that's that's kind of the thing you you know you might as well just stick with the office job where because yeah. that is predictable yeah I get a two percent raise. Next. Yeah, 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 yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So it's like you gotta kind of embrace it, the 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 unknown, the chaos, because otherwise. No, what... it's very. I'm I'm very excited, but even with the office job, you know, I'm always looking in what whatever I'm currently doing. I'm always looking at, not only how can I be better at it, but also how can I grow it, and even in an office job, that's not always clear. Uh, yeah, you talk a lot about growth. I, uh, <laughs> it's a, um, it's an obsession for me now. Yeah, you got twenty years of therapy makes yeah. me really like: Am I reaching the full potential of this thing? Am I, you know, am I taking care of it? Yeah, am I, I kinda, giving it the attention it needs? I kind of have like, hey, it's fine. <laughs> I'm very aware. <laughs> that was the that was the mislead when I first met you, where it was like. It's not fine. Like yeah. you're, like, you it's, say it's fine, but yeah. I now I know you're hiding that it's not fine. <laughs> but as soon as you start talking about growth, I'm yeah, like, I'd it's rather. Like when just... I brought up wearing a wearing a button down shirt on stage. Oh no, no, no! I don't know about that blazer. I don't know. I don't know about that blazer. Oh, well. So yeah. So we're we're talking about these gigs. We're lining up. <laughs> We've told this story before. We right? have. Yes, that's oh, why I brought it up. Oh, it was a callback. <laughs> And then you already went into it. That's how much it affected you. That was your trauma. <laughs> like, I'm not wearing a fucking Your blazer. grandfather had World War II in his newspapers. You have yeah. that time I asked you to put a blazer on to yeah. do a show. <laughs> and not even just in theory. <laughs> it wasn't wear, even booked. We want to wear blazers or something like that. I'm like, yeah, I, I got to circle back to the blazer <laughs> issue. We talked for another hour and he got went back to the blazer. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to go back to the places. I'm not wearing a blazer. <laughs> you can follow me at Josh Ricardo and go to joshricardo.com. Uh, we have about five or six new tour dates up there, so make sure you go and buy your tickets now and come see us on the tour. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Ed McGowan Comedy. Go to edmcgowan.com see my city dates. Uh, email us if you've ever worn a blazer on stage. If yeah. you know what the name of that Nick Cage movie is, please. Yeah, we need email. to see it. <laughs> I, mean, I can't remember it. It's like a devil thing. It's very fun. Yeah, uh, we resorted to you just emailing us about shit that we forgot. So we don't have a fact checker. Just correct Wait, We might us. be getting a producer, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We well, might be getting tuned. a producer. We might yeah, get yeah. a producer. So keep that under. Well, yeah, we don't want to reveal, <laughs> yeah, too, much. reveal too much. Might have a producer coming on. <laughs> uh, email us at workingclasscomedians at gmail.com. We'll see you guys in the next week. <laughs> you can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday, you can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you gotta do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.